Hey guys, welcome back to Mo's Game Table. Today I'm joined by Mark Herman, uh, who really does not need any introduction. Everybody knows his games, and he's going to bust my chops now for <laughs> talking really highly about him. But we're going to talk about uh, his latest game, Waterloo, which is going to be coming out in the next C3i, which should probably be in the next couple months. Oh, you're returning this to me. Thank you very much. Uh, I just got a full Saigon expansion kit back. Oh, the guy's nice. leaving, yeah. Excellent. There you go, Fall of Saigon. So we're going to be discussing a little bit about Waterloo, Fall of Saigon maybe, Versailles 1919, and anything else that Mark wants to talk about. So, well, first off, Mark, thanks a lot for joining me. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Good to see you, Good to see you. Good to see you. And uh, let's talk about Waterloo. Uh, that's the sure. first one. Uh, you did Gettysburg first, and let's yeah, yeah. talk about what the differences are between that. Okay, well, so if you know me, like I, I wanted originally, so Waterloo is definitely comes from the common DNA of the Gettysburg game, mm -hmm. but you know, it's Napoleonic warfare, so there, were, there had to be some refinements, but actually what ended up happening is the refinements really added enormous value to it, to the point where I now retrofitted some of them back into Rebel Fury, which is the follow on to Gettysburg. So now what are those refinements people want to know? Sure. So I, I came up with something that you know, I'm not saying it's, you know, it, it's special, but it works really well. So typically in a game, if you want to have an attack, you have to be next to the attacker, you know, the defender, right? You got, yeah. you know, it's just like a typical hex encounter game, you know, next to you, I attack you. If I want cavalry support, the cavalry, the usual rule is everybody has to be adjacent to the guy who's defending. Mm -hmm. But it turns out that, you know, if you read all the accounts, remember at the level and the scale and all that, if the cavalry unit is adjacent to the attacker, does not have to be adjacent to the defender, mm. you can have a cavalry charge. Okay. They kind of charge through their lines, sure. you get support, so there's a lot of support rules with cavalry which are kind of cool but very simple. And also, each cavalry unit once per turn can launch a charge, where you get extra bonus for. Nice. But after that they're exhausted, you flip the counter over to the exhausted side, but you can only rejuvenate it to fresh if you're not, you're out of contact with the enemy. So if you're in the Battle of Waterloo and you charge your cavalry once, you're so close you won't be able to fix them for the next turn. Yeah. And so they stay exhausted. Not useless, but they're not as useful sure. when that fresh. And then the other thing was, uh, so this goes back to, I, now, now, now I'm going to tell stories. Go for so, it. So in the 19... Sit down, have a drink, yeah, and enjoy it. It won't be long. <laughs> so in the late 1980s, I was, under, I was working for the Joint Staff, but I was in NATO for like, Ten weeks and five to two week periods running war games over in Brussels. Sure. So you know, in Brussels, weekend comes up and you're not working on weekend. And so I, I've been to the Waterloo battlefield a dozen times. I've been to Ligny. I've been, I've been over the whole area. Now, what you discover, especially when you read the books, is the Battle of Waterloo could have happened in multiple places. You know, Wellington. They always tell you Wellington had you know, pre-surveyed the battlefield of the world, but that was only one of like 30 places. Mm. He didn't know, you know, he had multiple locations he was sure. going to fight that battle because he thought they might come around his flank, or, you know, mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff. In fact, the Prussians used British survey maps to retreat to Wavre because they had really good maps to get back to Wavre that the British had created. Mm. So what I figured out was when, you know, Charlie uh, Kibler, the great Charlie Kibler did the map, he said, tell me what the defensive terrain is, but I've been over the terrain very heavily. There's a Waterloo terrain is not atypical of that region. Mm -hmm. You could have fought that battle anywhere in a lot of places. So what happens in the game is the terrain, there is terrain for like rivers and streams and roads and all and towns and you know fortifications, you know, the, the chateaus that are very unique to the area. But your HQ now, which wasn't the case in Gettysburg, has two sides. It's got a sort of a normal side and it's got a battle mode side. Now the battle mode side has a much smaller range, but any, anybody who fights a, fights within range of the HQ on its battle side gets star benefits. In other words, okay. Wellington has put you in, he's using this piece of ground by going to his defensive mode, he's he's using the terrain correctly, however sure. it is. So that really opens up the whole campaign in a really interesting way. So now, where you fight, and it, it, typically, it, it's funny, you end up pretty much fighting along the same lines, but you don't have to. And that's yeah. really the more interesting yeah. piece of it. And so that battle mode side for the HQ, this little cavalry rule, uh, and the detachment rules a little bit more, uh, more um, it's not unlike Gettysburg, but it's more, it's better developed. Mm -hmm. And those three things that make the Waterloo campaign, it's a full size map, by the way. Oh, nice. So it's a lot more maneuver room. Yeah. And it just it plays, it plays like a Napoleonic Waterloo game, not like Gettysburg. It's not like Gettysburg and Waterloo, it's Waterloo. Yeah. But I've taken the battle mode HQ thing and the um, detachment rules are being rolled back in. The, the, the cavalry rules are fine in, you know they don't have cavalry charges you know? sure so yeah. they there was one or two but they, they don't really have cavalry charges but so it really plays 
you know, I really like playing it, so I, I always do. So I really it's like it. If you want, you can play it uh, tomorrow. Yeah, no, definitely will. Yeah, so the World of the Games really coming along right now. Is that getting a deluxe treatment by any chance? In the so future? I suspect yes, but that's not, it's wrong, it's cool. You know, sure. I, I, I just I just design them. You know, the, the, <laughs> the, the master takes care of the rest of it. There you go. So right now, uh, I know that the issue is partially, I've seen many of the articles that I wrote, they've all been laid down and finished. And right now he's laying down the rules, but mostly he's putting the diagrams together for the rules. Yeah, I just gave him a file for that. So, I I think he's shooting for the end of the year, plus or minus a mm-hmm. couple of weeks, one way or the other. Probably more than into tough, January. Tough with with the holidays and stuff. Probably yeah, push it to yeah, yeah, but but it's coming. I mean, it's, yeah. we're 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 imminent. And, yeah. Uh, so I haven't seen the lay down rules yet, but other than that, the counters are already printed. They're they're great, no mistakes. They were very nicely die cut, uh, and the map is finished. They just have to print it, but I have the final art for that. So you know, I'm playing on the real stuff and the rules. Uh, I got a good friend of mine, Scott Muldoon, rewrote the rules. So I think he did an excellent job. You know, I wrote the rules, but then he recast them in a way that you know, when you write rules, you kind of get you organize the way you start, but then you change things. Somebody looking at it with a fresh eye kind of goes, oh, but what if we just wrote, and it's, yeah. the rules are really um, clean. There's only 12 pages of rules typing, mm-hmm. which in rules length is like, yeah. like six pages, six pages yeah. maybe, four or five. Yeah. Well, that's great. Yeah, so it's uh, low complexity, but I think high play, you know, highly playable, highly replayable, and 90 minute game, maybe two hours if you're slow. Well, it's kind of like we were talking about last night with that gateway type of war game. Like, you know, gateway as in low complexity, ease of entry is the lower barrier to entry. That's true. I agree with all that. But I'm going to tell you something. You know, so I'm going to be 65 in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And I even got a Medicare card. Oh, my God. Uh, (laughs) He was showing it off to everybody last night. I did not show it to anybody. (laughs) Never give away your number. No. Uh, (laughs) But the main point is is that, you know, when I want to sit down and play a Waterloo game, I. I, in the old days, I would have played one of the big Love Tie games, and I would spend you know a weekend playing like an hour of combat and two crowd yeah. charges. Now I want to finish the game, you know. And so this is a game that if you set it up, you know, at after lunch, you know, you're you're you got time to watch football, you know. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's the, we were talking about that last night. So I think that's what the game is. I'm really trying to go back to the old uh, blue and gray quad games. Yeah, you know, the old Napoleonic quad mm-hmm. games. Which were really good games, but when I did Gettysburg and then doing Waterloo, you know, the, the, the old moose shoot was good for those days. So this, I've gone be past that. So I feel like there's enough juice in the design so it's interesting and fresh again, yeah. but low complexity, but fast playing and worth playing, hopefully. You know, that's yeah, the main yeah. thing. I just saw a guy who played Gettysburg multiple times. He said, I love it. You know, so that's what, and he's a hardcore gamer. So that, yeah. you know, most gamers are playing these. I mean, we're at a con, so they'll play the big, you know, sure. long-winded games. But when you're with, you got one person coming over, you don't have, you know, you, you know, you got things to do in your yeah. life. You got limited kids, time, yeah. you know, limited time, and so you want to finish something. You want to have a good experience, and that's kind of. I'm sort of in my minimalist period now. You know, yeah. you know, the, the blue period, the red period, my minimalist period. <laughs> you know, so I'm in my minimalist period now. So I did have part of this. I feel like I've proven that I can, I can go on that scale. More Pacific, more you know, even before that. Oh God. So now we we do have. A uh, little bit of uh, a right. look at Fall of Saigon, which yeah, is I mean, I mean, it's in a bag, and the guy just threw the stuff in here. But I'll pull the because we're going to talk about low complexity and, and quick games to the opposite end of the spectrum. I, I don't know. That, I, I mean, I would well, say that it's, a, it's a, yeah. definitely a longer game. There's no so, question. However, believe it. So here's the Fall of Saigon. Fall of Saigon. There. there you go. Uh, the thing is, is that so let's talk about Fall. So I got to tell another story. So you know, it's it's not a secret. You, you and I have talked. You know. So Mo and I have had a challenging last year with surgery. Yes. Let's just say that's true. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, so the good news is I, I'm i told I'm cancer-free. So we're gonna, That's the we're, best news ever. But every day is a special day. Yes. So, but the, the important thing was, is to the story is, so it was, I got operated on September 5th a year ago, and I had four designs that were close to being done. And there was, you know, it, to be fair, it was a serious op- I mean, a six and a half hour operation. You know, mm-hmm. you, you don't always wake up. So I says, so I said to myself, these could be the last four games I ever do. It was in my mind. So I finished three of them, and you know, Gettysburg was one of them, and yeah. uh, Versailles. Um, there's another one. Uh, I'll think of it now. Oh, <laughs> Peloponnesian War. Peloponnesian War. Yeah, and and, and Full of Saigon was the fourth. Mm-hmm. But I ran out of time. You know, I had to show up to the hospital. Yeah, and I and, and then I had and then of course after you know recovery, you you know there's there's months where and, and, and by the time I I just kind of forgot. Gotta get your groove back. No, but I forgot. No, I really. So one day now fast forward to just last July first, 
I just finished reading uh, Max Hastings' Vietnam book. And all of a sudden my brain goes, hey, weren't you working on for <laughs> I gotta go back Wait, to that. I said, what was that? <laughs> so I go to my computer, it was July 1st, I pop it up and I go, oh wow, I finished it. I just needed to finish the, the rules. So I call up Volko <laughs> and Gene, I said, today's July 1st, on July 3rd I'll finish, I'll have the rules to you. I had all the cards done. Yeah. I sent it all off to Volko. Who, you know, now when I say I had the cards, I had all the events and what they're supposed to do. But you know, Volko had to like coinize them. Sure. Which he does, and he had to put them in. And he does all that graphic stuff, which mm -hmm. I just felt I'm too challenged and I'm just too damn lazy to do. So he did all that. I finished the rules. So by July 3rd, the game was officially in full, ready for play test. Sure. And I got it. You saw it at the WBC. Yes. And we were playing it. So. Out of nowhere, by the way, just so you know, Volko then goes to me, by the way, you owe me $5,000. I go, no, he goes, well, like, you forgot about Full Sail. I'm going to tell you, figure out that too. <laughs> so I didn't pay him $5,000. But so Full Sail just kind of came out of the blue on me because yeah. I forgot I finished it, more or less. Well, I mean, that's a, that's a good thing to forget. Yeah, I was, I was, like, I was surprised, saying, actually. Oh, wow, I was supposed to have a game done and yeah. I'm not even started on so, it. Yeah, <laughs> so, so I've had it. My wife keeps going, what game, how, would you, how many games did you produce? I said, ah, just keep making it. I forgot. <laughs> well, it works talk, better when you forget. Well, it's funny. You I was talking to Mark Simonich and um, Bruce Maxwell. Max, Madison, the guy who did Gandhi. What's, what's, it's Maxwell, it's his last name. I think it is. Mansfield. Bruce, Mansfield. I knew what somebody calls it. Bruce Mansfield. I just had dinner with him. So I just, was, <laughs> sorry, Bruce. Sorry, Bruce. Yeah, it's just okay. I love you, baby. <laughs> um, you know, but he's, he's a nonviolent guy. So yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and, you know, we were just kind of talking, and, and I realized that, you know, a lot of designers get their start, like, doing their first game, they have another job. But I started as a designer at SPI, so my first two and a half years, I did 18 games. So, so I had a, diff I have a different view about how you develop and, and bring a game to closure mm -hmm. than, now, it took me five years to do it part of them, but I had a full-time job. But when I was sure. doing it full-time, I could really crank, crank games. Yeah. Well, you know, the, Dunnigan said, here's how much money you have to finish the game, you better finish it or a fire. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> That's good motivator. Yeah, it's a motivator. That, that should, you know. But um, so I work at a different pace when I'm doing it full time. I haven't done it full time for, for you know, a yeah. long time, but now it's like I'm in my flow. So I've got like five or six designs, you know, moving along at different paces. I just finished yeah. Waterloo, Full Saigon's or Versailles in production, and I got like five more coming. So I'm having a great time. That's awesome. Yeah. Now let's talk real briefly about Versailles. How's everything going with that? Versailles done. In fact, we just played. Now, one of the things I, I used to find is a lot of people don't know who Redmond Simonson was. He was the co-founder of SPI, and he was a great, you know, one of the early great graphic artists of our industry. Uh, sadly, passed away a number of years ago. But but Redmond, I always found Redmond was the guy who told me about how to make graphics, how to make graphics enhance the game, make it more functional. You know, sure. think about that. And and so I have found is and I used to whenever I had a game at SPI, I used to talk Redmond into playing the game once with me. Mm. He didn't have to play, you know, or even just a couple of turns. He didn't sure. have to play the whole game. Well, he was a very a very competitive game player, so he usually played the whole game. But the point was is that when the artist plays the game once, then they see the graphics you want them to do differently because now they're putting their input into yeah. making it more visible, more functional. Mm -hmm. And so I so the most important part of this Warsaw game is I. The game's great shape. Uh, most of the art's done, but I, I got Mark Simonich to, uh, and you know, have to know me and Mark. We had this conversation at least twenty times. He'll go, "Hey, on this map, does this ha does this have to be black?" I go, "You know, if I was the art director, I would say no." And he looks at me like, I, "I just do whatever." I said, "You're the art director. Fix it, would you? I mean, if you don't like it, make it better. I don't care. I'm not a, I'm not a graphics guy. I'm a historian. I do game design. You know, you're the graphics guy. So I always kid around with it. But so he's he's now going to. You know, I've got his attention, but now that he's played it, he knows what he's trying. You know, sure. I don't like that icon. Well, then why don't you fix it? <laughs> exactly. And so it's going to be a lot better now. So I always find getting, uh, more, I always get Mark to play my games at least once, and it always makes it a ton better yeah. on the presentation and the integration of the rules and the graphics. Because, you know, he, that's what he does. And he's a good game how and how he's designed it. Is. And he yeah. also has to be a phenomenal game designer. So sure. he's got the whole package. And so when he plays one of my games, he goes, okay, I need to, here's what I need to do here. Mm -hmm. And it really helps. So that's where is, is well into art production. Okay, good. Uh, you know, the map is done. Well, the map was done now. Some colors apparently are changing. Yeah, so <laughs> if it's going to be black, yeah, it's, it's going to be The black. cards are done, but a couple of yeah. icons that are going to change. You know, so that's all good. Sure. You know, we've got a good artist, but, you know, Mark will now start putting his... His final final touches on final it. Final touches on it. And, uh, you know, so we're in good shape. I, I think it goes to um, the printers sometime. It'll be before the end of the year, it'll go to the printers, and then, you know, whatever that process, you know, you know, if there's a trade war on, no trade war, you know, who the heck knows. But uh, it'll be sometime in the, I would say that 
first quarter of 2020 is a very strong bet, but it might be more towards the back end of the quarter because you know, sure. it's got to be printed, it's got to be shipped, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and then you have, right. you have a lot of you got like Chinese New Year and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So it could be even it could even be April, but it, it, but it's done. You know, so the game is done and just end up in play testing. And people, the reaction has been phenomenal. You know, Jeff, I worked, you know, this is the co-design with Jeff Engelstein, mm-hmm. great guy to work with. You know, and we brought it. Really, is a very you know, it's a game that neither one of us would have designed on their own. Well, collaborating, but I think collaborating, really, the collaboration really great. worked really, yeah. really well. So I'm really pleased with the the product. And you know, I always have these high hopes for every game. Like, oh, everybody's going to love it. And then I'll get the first. You're an idiot. Your, your <laughs> game sucks. You know, Jeff Eggleston would have made a good game, but you helped him and you screwed it up. You know, I had to hear all that. But I'll live through that. Like I always do. <laughs> well, I got one last question for you. Mark. Sure, sure, sure. Now, there's been you know, forever, people talk about the graying of the hobby and how we have to bring in new people and stuff. It's just an age old, you know, uh, talking point. But I don't, what I want to do is I want to ask you how you see the future of the hobby going now that we're seeing a lot more blending and fusing, uh, fusing of Euros and board games together, like All right, board so, games and stuff. So here's the thing. Mm-hmm. The board game industry is expanding. There were, I figured out, there's about three or four game, board games being produced every day. Mm-hmm. We're probably producing one, maybe up to two war games per week. Mm-hmm. So we're putting out like a you know a hundred to two hundred new war games. Now let's say the hot let's take it to its like there are no more. It's impossible to say there's no more war games because I see conflict games in the Euro games. Yes, I, I think yeah. what I've seen is as the you know it, look it takes a spectrum of people. You know the the standard of the of the big industry. Is you know sort of the one hour medium complexity game, but there are there, but it, just like in the old days, there's a bunch of people who feel like they need more, and they want to, they call them heavy years. A good friend of mine, uh, uh, Edward Euler, uh, does heavy, heavy cardboard, cardboard yeah. and heavy cardboard are there are significant you know strategy games and, mm-hmm. and and conflict being a the broad not war game but conflict game. Conflict game, yeah. But when I play the Star Wars games, I mean they're shooting at each other. That's yeah. how it feels like a war game. Yeah. And so it's the topic now. Will historical you know, even like I said, even I'm in my minimalist period. I don't want sure. to do. I want to play Waterloo in you know 90 minutes or two hours. I don't want to play it. You know, I, I, I read, there was this game that I love even still. I even said I would take it if I. It was I, this is anybody, it was the one I take to the cabin. That guy, five games to Doomsday guy. Yes, yes, I remember that. that. Great, yeah. great. If you haven't ever listened to it, it's great uh, podcast. But um, I told Ben that was the Slava title of Muscova was one of the games I want to take to the pot. And you know, it's four maps and it's you know two thousand counters and you can but. You know, I have fond memories of it, and I play, and I even play it periodically, very periodically, maybe once a year yeah. or once every other year. But, but again, you know, I like that long, crazy experience. But that's not the norm, you know. No. You know, but so I have enough of those, and mm-hmm. but I like the new stuff. I'm definitely going more for speed, but a lot of history, but trying to distill the history down to the essence. Like, what is the real? You know, get the big muscle movements in, but leave that all there. You know. Minutia. Leave all that stuff out. Just get the overarching story in there and yes, do right. it within ninety minutes. Of exactly. Hours exactly. And that's really kind of where I'm at right now. Like I said, I did it part of this, and I, I don't feel like I owe no. anybody. Any, I don't feel bad, you know. Which I still play all the time, by the way. Yeah, I know. I see you posting all the time on Twitter. You're, you're playing it again and again. In fact, uh, just so you know, I'm going to be packed on plug. And a, a friend of mine, Jim Dohan, who's okay. uh, a you know well-known gamer, he likes Empire of the Sun, so he's got a big set. So I packed on plug. On December seventh, nice. We're, oh, we're setting up. We're playing <laughs> the Pacific War on his big set at Pax Unplugged nice. in one of the rooms. So, you know, oh, you're gonna play on the big map. Yeah, oh, that's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be a little bit of a spectacle. I think. That's, that's gonna, gonna be great. Yeah, 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 it's gonna be very cool. So we're gonna yeah. play that at the Pax Unplugged. So yeah, we're gonna have a good time with it. Excellent. Yeah. Well, uh, that's all I got for you today, Mark. I really appreciate you taking the time. My pleasure, Mo. And chat. Until and, next uh, time, I see you, buddy. Yeah, I'll see you uh, next time. Probably we'll be at WBC next year. That'll that's be all right. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next time. Bye.